Hey guys, before we get into today's episode, here's an exclusive clip from David Jack, our guest today in his new project, We Are Press, a sneak peek behind the scenes look of San Francisco 49er star running back Christian McCaffrey's workout routine with his coach. I'd like to announce my retirement from anything athletic. Make sure you're pushing through that big toe. Don't get too far on the outside of your foot. Good. We're going to control the way down, explode on the way up. Rotate around that spine a little bit more. There you go, good. Okay. Keep those hip, hips pressed forward here. Three, two, one. Work. Flat back, all tripods on your feet. Good, squeeze up, nice slow control down. Let's have you do some of that deep squat breathing. Go ahead. Some happy baby to finish off the week. Perfect. Good stuff. Yo, BJ Gador with the BJ Gador podcast. And as I tend to do on this show, which very few people watch, but I do bring on legends and I've got one today. We've had him on over the last seven years in this podcast. He makes his way every couple of years in this journey of life. He is a true fit over 50 legend in the fitness industry. The original men's health guy, the guy who connected me with the men's health brand. You have seen him in various campaigns over the last multiple decades here. Uh, Reebok, uh, you know, th this guy is also one of the most dynamic speakers I've ever seen in and out of the fitness space. He is the type of guy, I'll, I'll share this quick story with you. This may have been like 10 years ago, and I was picking him up from the airport in Milwaukee, was coming to shoot some content with us for a, a company I used to run called StreamFit. And I'm like, he comes out like, who's he talking to? He's talking to this person like he knows this person for life, like this is a long time best friend or uh, unrequ unrequited love. I'm like, what's going on here? And I'm, I, he comes in the car as I'm, you know, get his luggage, and I'm like, who was that? He goes, somebody I met in the plane. But you would not have known this was someone he had just met. This is a man who has a gift with people that I have never fully seen before in my life. If I had his gift, I would have retired ten years ago. In, in fact, like he he actually, we're like the yin and yang of like, I'm kind of this uh, robot and, and he's just like this charismatic person that just seeks 
people and list people up. And um, so it's good to have these people in your life. But I, I, there's countless stories I can share about like what this guy has done, um, missionary work, helping people get their start in the industry, helping people uh, navigate the challenges of the industry. And um, some of, I always go to this too, some of the best triceps we've ever seen. And he doesn't even train them anymore. So uh, I'll bring him in a second. Couple housekeeping issues here. By the way, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about overcoming uh, knee pain a little bit. Uh, both Dave, Jack, and I have had uh, kind of catastrophic knee injuries in our youth from athletics, and uh, have tried to find a way to keep going, both for ourselves and for what we do with our business and fitness, and helping others try to do the same thing. We're going to kind of jam on that, and it's gotten more challenging as we've gotten older, which I know a lot of people listening can relate to. We're also going to talk about his latest project, We Are Press, uh, a really unique, uh, I, I haven't seen this done before where, you know, there's there's so much fitness content out there right now, but the angle they've taken is it's kind of like uh, very voyeuristic. They go, it, it, basically it's like a behind the scenes look at the interaction between a trainer and coach and their athlete. And we have some high level pro athletes like Christian McCaffrey, who just did a number on my Packers in the playoffs. Um, and then also just, you know, uh, high-level athletes that may not be as famous, but again, you can see that dynamic between coach, player, or teacher, student. And that's something that typically uh, you never get to see. So we'll, we'll be jamming on like what it's, what the mindset in that, what, what it's taking to make that type of content, which is on YouTube. Links will be in the video description. I'll pop in a video link as well. Uh, those listening on YouTube, show notes, check it out for iTunes and Spotify. Um, and then we'll just, you know, as it tends to happen, good friends. I've known him a long time. We just had dinner together together at the Capitol Grill. What an experience. I, I will say, you know, I love Capitol Grill. It wasn't the Capitol Grill it used to be. <laughs> okay, like restaurants these days. Restaurants these days. But a couple of hugs, keeping issues. We've got to keep the lights on here. Um, first of all, it takes you one second. We're about to give you an hour plus of our time. It takes you one second to just smash that like button. Wow, what an act. What an act. They give you their time like this for free. And you just you say, okay, I'm gonna give them one second of their time back and just like it because it helps them get this out to more good people like you. So we can go ahead and take that time and energy and resources and send it back to you. Do us that gift today. It's not a lot. All right. All the gear you see me wear in our videos, sleeves sold separately.com, manufactured in downtown LA. It's not a sweatshop, so we can't give you sweatshop prices, but these are custom fits, the best fabrics in the game. We'd appreciate your support. Also, you get a lot of my content here on YouTube with ads. If you want ad-free access to all of my content, past and present over the last 10 years, I'm talking 1,000 plus workouts. Go to thedailybj.com, get a free seven-day trial, and uh, stay tuned for some other cool things in the mix. By the way, also the my daily... Greens powder and, and multivitamin, athletic greens, also now called AG1. Got to get it. It's a simple daily investment with my link, five free travel packs, a one-year supply of vitamin D. So again, Dave Jack, welcome to the show. I hate having to do that little introduction, but you know people aren't going to watch more than five minutes, so I got to get the, the sales in right away too. I, I kid, I kid. Oh, man. I'll tell you what, bro. I uh, thank you so much, first of all, for just being who you are. You are a special human being. I've known it since the very first time I met you. I think you were 20 years old uh, at, a, at a conference in New Jersey. And at that moment, I watched you operate. I watched how you carried yourself. I watched how you delivered passion to people and, and the way you approach what you do. And in, in the audience, I, I'd seen a bunch of people already at that level of, of my career, that state of my career. And I just looked at you and I'm like, man, this guy's special. He's got something different. And I just want to thank you for who you are and what you do every day. Well, dude, I appreciate that. And uh, let me ask you this. Why, why? I've actually never even asked you this. Why did you decide to introduce me to Adam Campbell at Men's Health, which is basically how everything started with, uh, you know, what people listening, most likely they saw me probably through that or they, uh, they eventually saw me online later, but on the back end of what that did, that what that platform did for, you know, getting my stuff out there and uh, kind of building a, a small niche following. 
Yeah, man. I, uh, it, it, I think it's a couple of things as I look back. One, what's continued to grow in my life is this desire to magnify the good in things around me. And whether that's fitness or people, I, I just, it, it really brings me joy when I get to see something in someone or something and get to point at it, lift it up, shine a light on it, and, and then watch it just go do what it does without having to get anything in return. So I, I kind of call that magnifying the good. And in order to do that, you have to be able to to see it or be drawn to it and then and then believe in that. And so that's part of it, just how I'm wired, I think, in my personality and in my nature. But the other part is just being a person of faith. You know, I kind of roam around in my life and then every now and then I get this little, you know, this still small voice that's like, hey, pay attention. And I do my best just to be obedient to it. And so I think at that moment, it was really two things. One, having known you long enough, watching how you work, watching how you hustle, watching how you practice behind the scenes when no one sees you, uh, watching the effort you put into things that you do, and really believing in you as an individual. The same thing with magnifying the good in something has this other side where it's, I don't have to magnify the good in anything if I don't believe it, because that's not, that's not fair and that's not right and that's not profitable for that individual or the individual that I might re be referring to them to or talking to them about. And so I knew that men's health had this, had this momentum, had this opportunity, had this platform that not only did they need something more than, than, I could pro than I could give them, but there was this guy that had something that I knew would be, would be beneficial to that relationship and vice versa. And so I just had it stirring in my mind, had seated Adam for a while about you. There was this window that a shoot that I was going on. And I called them up and I said, hey, this is such a perfect thing we're discussing for my friend BJ to come in. And he's like, hey, we can't fly him in. I said, he'll he'll handle the flight. Would you just let him come in with me, be with me on set? And then if there's an opportunity, I'd love to give him a chance just to do what he does because I think it's going to be amazing. And that was it. And by the way, like a lot of the names you see out there doing big things, like the, the it, these apples fell from the David Jack tree. Like a lot of the initial connections he gave to, to people in the industry, uh, his work through Reebok, which put a lot of like, you know, um, Jeremy Scott, for example, you know, that, that that's a guy that who would have been successful regardless. But um, Dave Jack helped facilitate connections. Um, and by the way, like your example really uh, stuck with me too, in terms of, you know, when you when you see people that have it, don't get in their way, help them. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, the qualifier is the good. Don't just help someone because you're you're looking for a you know quid pro quo or you're looking for help down the road. Because yeah, yeah, it is who you know. A lot of gatekeeping in all industries. Um, so if you're gonna do it, do it with do it with credibility, do it with integrity, and uh, it feels great, man. It really feels like I, I you know, you, you put on a Reebok event. Um, where I first met Jeremy Scott. And then I was able to bring Jeremy Scott on and do his whole thing at Men's Health in his Action Hero Jack program, you know, because he does it like Bruce Willis. Um, so th these are the examples that we talk about where, like, I guess you could call it the hockey assist. You know, uh, you don't necessarily get credit for it, but it sure lights you up. And you are helping. And I think, especially in times now where there's this, like, there's this, and you've always had this mindset, abundance over scarcity, but we live in a scarcity time, right? It feels like everything around us is crumbling. Uh, people are fighting for resources like never before. Uh, we've lost trust and a lot of the things that have kind of kept us, you know, in, in, a, in a good place. So we start to get in this habit of hoarding and me, 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 me. This, not to get too existential, but how do you go about keeping that mindset of, okay, I'm going to keep magnifying the good, you know, uh, keep elevating others, even when, frankly, I, I I could use a little bit of elevation myself, you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people are battling this right now, and again, I, I can't think of a better person to speak to it. <clears throat> yeah, man, I'll tell you, growing up, just, just a step back, and I'll just be straight up as honest as I can be, um, I really look back on my life, you know, BJ, and I, I think that in ways I had an abundance mindset, in ways I had a lot of scarcity. And I think my scarcity was connected to me not feeling like I was enough. 
even though everybody around me said I was, maybe that's what set me up to be afraid to fail or fall. And, you know, having that fixed mindset in certain things that what I did well was who I was. And if I didn't do that well, then I'm not good either. So, man, we, we don't have time to wade into those deep waters, but I really didn't start to realize and take a look at that until my early 40s. And I was like, gosh, and so many of the things that I probably did in my life, whether it was not giving someone else the full opportunity, unless it maybe helped me or you know made me feel good or I got something back, I couldn't do that because if I did that, then it would be an admission that I'm not good enough or my ego would, would need to protect that or my pride. Like, because I needed affirmation, right? I needed validation because I didn't really think of myself as being being worthy enough um, or being good enough in the eyes of others. And it's something I still have to wrestle with. But so I just want to give you some of the backdrop. I think the two things that help me now are, you know, it, it is absolutely my faith. And, and when I am, when I'm at my end, when I make mistakes, uh, you know, what I say that, you know, for me, my God does for me what I can't do for myself. And so I'll hear things or I'll I'll experience things and it just keeps me from drift. But I do believe that one, it's keeping, reminding myself of what the greater intention is, the greater mission is. And really like the people we serve in our profession, it's about them. And so if, if there's someone that I know or something that I know that can help someone else find answers that help them in their life or serve them, man that's that's the mission so get out of the way and because that's what we're rising tides are raising all ships to serve that end the last thing i'll say is i think when you do it a few times there's this there's this statement that says you know once that you taste it's good you want you want to taste it again and so i think i've seen enough in my life that when i've been obedient when i've listened to the still small voice when i have stepped out and tried to do something without without expecting things in return which isn't always easy I have to wrestle with that a lot too, because I am an imperfect dude, uh, just trying to make progress. But I do, I do get this. You know, it's like when you do the right things and and you do a couple reps and the set goes really well. It's like wow, that works. You know, that works. And so you want to do it again. So I would say that those things are a factor in it. Well, you know, once it's interesting. I've had this conversation with with my wife before too. Um, one of the things I struggle with the most interpersonal relationships. And again, I don't want that. That's a, not, that's a whole, that's a book. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's what, that's the book of Brahim junior. Uh, that will come out years from now when I'm in jail, but the, the whole concept of, cause again, you know, you look at a lot of these business relationships, right? It's business, you know, and you, you, you in life, you need to develop allies. And the whole point of allies is not just to have people that you can bounce ideas off of and, and help, but also like you go through tough times too. It'd be nice to get a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of help back. So, but that that's dangerous, right? Cause then things become transactional, but it isn't all thing, aren't all things transactional. Um, and again, I know, I know you've, you've seen this and I, I've seen this too. There's been plenty of people that have, I've helped. Um, and again, you're not supposed to expect anything in return. You know, that, that, that really is the way to, to go about things. But then, you know, you leave men's health and it's like, oh, okay. You wouldn't even get back to me. Interesting. But you can't let that sour you for all future relationships, right? Because, you know, you and I, 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 I will always have your back. You know that. We, we, like, I just saw you and Jeremy after, like, you were the first people that I didn't run into like at the grocery store. And that wasn't my wife or my dog that I had seen in six months. So you, you, you've really etched a very close place in my life as a person that, um, you know, just needs a few people, frankly, you know? Um, and a lot of that is because of the fact that when I was trying to get my start and trying to find a, a way to accelerate things, um, you, you, you saw something and whether you, 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 what you saw was was true or not you you put it into action and you elevated me and you put me in a, in a whole new track completely changed the trajectory, trajectory of my life so yeah i i will always feel indebted to you but the reason i keep you in my life is because of who you are the character uh the talent and also like one of the one of the people i, I i've seen in life the most that has just handled adversity and resilience and has a resilience about you that uh wow it, it's 
it's motivating. But again, like I'm not saying that there's an answer to this, but I do know it's a really difficult space to navigate because you also have so many, you have limited resources too. So if you're going to go about elevating someone and that person is only going to end up caring about themselves, well, that's a tough, that's a tough situation because what if that person, you know, doesn't do it right. And then you lose the ability to elevate others forever because of that. You know what I'm saying? So I, I don't know exactly. There's a question there, but um, it's just, it's just something really interesting to me because uh, th that that's, this is my weakness. Like I, I, I'm good. Like, Put me on a track and let me just go. And uh, maybe it takes 10, 20, 30 years, whatever. I'll just do the same thing every day and hope to get there. Um, it's it's dealing with people where I just, I can't do it. But you're, you're someone that just uh, has really developed those skills and ha has a, a stamina for it that is just impressive. Yeah, man, thank you so much. I, I, BJ, I think that that all of us have unique personalities. We have unique backstories. We have unique wounds. Uh, we have unique things that 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 interest us and in, in how we relate to people and just how we're wired emotionally and and i think it's really important that you give yourself permission just to know who you are at the moment and that doesn't mean you're not going to be someone different tomorrow it just means that's who you are today but i think we always have an opportunity i always have an opportunity to decide to make a decision and and is my decision going to be okay i'm going to allow myself to get caught up in all of these things that i think i should expect you know unrealistic expectations almost always lead to future resentments um am, am i going to allow myself to get caught up in that or what someone else does or doesn't do and what we say is i'm responsible for my life i get to have the opportunity to edit my story i have the opportunity to manage my thoughts i have the opportunity to pray to my god or to talk to the people that i get to talk to i got a massive log in my eye that i get to work on every day that should keep me so busy that i don't have the time to see the splinter in someone else's because when i start Oh, let me see what they got going on. I've done that a million times to people. Do you know how many people I've I've blown off or I and I maybe I didn't mean to or I've hurt their feelings or I've I've lied to or I've, you know, taken something I shouldn't have from or compared myself to or envied myself to. So if I just step back and think of myself, I did the same thing anybody else does. And so I think it's ultimately just for me coming back to and what's really cool about this is and not when I was younger, because I don't like the icky feeling of it. But as I'm getting older, when I recognize something and I take a little inventory or I slow down and I recognize, oh man, I don't, I don't feel good about that. I don't, I don't like the way that went down. I don't like the, what they did to me or what they said to me. Then I get to pause and I get to be in, I get to think about that. I get to, that's where I get to get in the gym. And now I get to go, why am I feeling that way? What is it about me? that's making me feel that way. What do I got to work through? So in, in the past, I would crumble under that because in the end, it's going to point something back to me that I didn't want to see in myself. Once again, you know, uh, fragile ego, fragile, uh, you know, uh, sense of, of value and worth. And so I don't want to wade into those waters because they're uncomfortable and I don't want to see myself. And ironically, that's the only way to become myself the way I was created to be. So it's it's progress, not perfection. Another thing I really struggled with when I was younger, like I wouldn't even do things. If in my mind, I could create a narrative where it's like, oh, this work that I'm gonna do, it was outcome, outcome, outcome. This work I'm gonna do, if I can't see how this is gonna turn into something, I'm gonna self-destruct. I'm not even gonna do it because it's not process. So I'm still trying to learn a lot of that stuff now. Like. And it's not easy, man. And it's uncomfortable for me. And I don't know if that answered at all any question of yours, but I just keep coming back to, I know when I, when I, when I'm not in the stuff, when I'm not hungry, angry, lonely, tired, when I'm not jacked up and frustrated and someone's not hitting a wound from me when I was a kid that I don't even know that I have. So my immediate response is like a dog that's been rescued. I go to reach down to pet it. All I want to do is help it. That dog turns around and wants to snap at me because that's all it knows. When someone big reaches down toward it, oh, it's going to hurt me and boom, it defends itself. It's, it's, a, it's a subconscious mechanism of behavior that's below the line. So that I get to look at that stuff and wrestle with that stuff and ultimately come back to this feeling that no one can take my joy. No one can take my identity. No one can take my peace. No one can take my power unless I choose to surrender that to them. And, and 
regardless of what the world gives or take away from me, I still have the opportunity to be content in all things and to have joy in those things. And those things become choices. And man, I'm still, I'm still like a kindergartner in that, in that gym. And, you know, so that statement, it's a powerful one. And it really is one that you have to fight every day with, uh, expectations breed resentment. It, it's like, it, it's an impossible thing to deal with because how can you not expect? Like the, oh, you, you forecast, you, 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 you like, you know, it's a difficult thing to not do. In fact, it's almost inhumane to not have expectations. So part of that is developing a level of indifference to just like being a bottle that's thrown into the ocean and, and you know, you're going to try to stay afloat, but you have no idea where you're going to go. And that, that is not a, that can be, that can be soothing because you just let go. We talked about this over dinner, like uh, the D'Angelo Russell example, for those that are basketball fans, long story short, essentially he's gone through one of the craziest years I've ever seen a pro athlete go through where like he's been humiliated publicly that they're, they're constantly looking to trade him. He, they bench him. He gets played off the floor in the playoffs because of his defense, but ultimately breaks through and ends up be playing the best basketball right now at the time recording this of his career. And, you know, people are asking, like, how did you find a way to get through this? Most people would have folded. And he said, I just don't care. I just don't care. I'm, I'm going to go and I'm going to work on my skills every day. I'm going to try to bring the best I can to my team. I'm going to uplift my teammates as much as I can. And I don't care. Um, and it, oftentimes, like you've heard this with pregnancy, right? People are trying to get pregnant. All the anxiety, the stress is making it impossible. They let go and then something happens, right? Finally, the gift happens. But this is in and out of the gym, in and out of work, and out of whatever. But the, the, the expectation. And again, like, you know, you and I have battled this uh, professionally for sure. The last, I mean, I, I remember uh, just when Men's Health, like, had the men's <laughs> early Men's Health website, right? And again, there's no other place besides like T Nation or like people don't even know what that is to go and find fitness information. This is literally the hub and you get a video up and you're doing teaching kettlebell swings for a minute and millions of people see it. Right. And, uh, and, and now you, everyone's fighting for just like tens of views in some cases. Right. Or, or everybody's getting, you know, uh, their stuff looked at and, and, and who knows, but, how, how how have you managed? Because it's easy to become resentful and looking around the corners like, why is he getting this? Why is she getting this? Um, and, and, you know, you and I both are going through some pretty challenging times. And it's not a big deal because I know everyone is. So mm -hmm. there's no, no need to even talk about that. But I know people are going through it right now. Um how, how to not get resentful, how not to, because again, part of the the journey with, with the aging process and getting older is, I know people say, I have no resent, I have no uh, regrets, right? Well, that's impossible. It's impossible. How could you not regret a, a, at least one decision you made in your life? Um, are you perfect? Uh, so how, how have you managed that? Because again, um, it's one of those things that anybody that gets in the room with you will know instantly that you have a presence. You have a, whether, you know, some would call it divine. Others would call it like, oh, this is just a good, <laughs> a, a good mix. Who knows? Right. Um, but we live in a, in, a, in a day where it is difficult for that. You, no one can feel that presence through a screen. That's how everyone's getting their information. I guess ultimately, by the way, we're going to get to some fitness stuff here at some point, but um, this is just what happens when two guys that think a little bit bigger than sets and reps uh, get together. Um, how, have, how have you battled that, that it's so easy to become resentful or to compare yourself to who you were 10, 20 years ago, maybe when things were popping more or where you had more energy, more motivation, um, there was more demand? for your service, right? How, how are you doing that? Oh, man, this is so good. We, we could have a two day gathering just around like five of these things you brought up are so powerful because they really are foundationally so important to our fitness and our health. 
you can have six pack abs and be miserable and angry and frustrated and feel like your life has passed you by and looking in the past and staring, not learning from it, staring at the past, staring at regret. And in the end, when I look at all this stuff, so a couple of things you mentioned that for me, I'm just going to share some things that I've had to work through and I'm still working through one other people's opinions are none of my business. <laughs> oh, good luck. Like, when I say that, it sounds so easy, unless it is my business, unless I can see something in myself that I did to cause that person harm, to cause that person distress, that I've got to own, clean my stuff up, even if it's a 0.01% of the issue, and theirs might be 99.9, I've still got stuff that I can own, and I don't have to expect anything from them. So once again, it comes back down to this, if this is about me, right? This is about what I do with this. So what am I, so here's my options. I First of all, if I'm if I'm blessed enough or if I'm fortunate enough to actually see my resentment, which sometimes they're, oh, I'm good. There's like 8,000 things hidden in me that got to be worked out. But God is so gracious. He's like, no, how about, how about one at a time? Because I don't want to blow you up because you can't handle it. But in the end, it's like, okay, so let's look at that. I can hold on to this resentment. And the only person that's getting poisoned by it is me. Like, think about that. I can't believe they didn't. I can't. And my mind and the rumination and the spinning and the... For what? For them to say, I'm sorry? For, for what? For them to say, oh, I, when they didn't even probably know that they did it. It's insanity, man. The amount of time that I would spend and effort and energy that I would spend trying to control things I can't control. Furthermore, I don't want to control. And, and what is it profiting me to hold on to this? And that's where I got to be like, you know, help. I got to talk to the right people that I trust, who know me, that aren't going to give me a free pass that are going to like love me because they want what's best for me. And they know that that crap isn't, but they'll sound it out without condemnation, without judgment. So first, I'm so grateful. I have some people like that in my life. Second, um, I think that for me, what I come to realize is, man, this is a daily practice. And some days things are easier to let go of depending on how I feel or what's going on. Other days, it's harder, depending on where the wound came from, depending on the work I've done there. And, you know, you and I were talking about it with Jay at dinner, not, not even a month ago. You know, I'm 51 years in and I've, I've seen some of this stuff and I've, I've seen freedoms happen in my life and I've seen really, really hard things made better. I've seen brokenness, uh, you know, started to be healed. And so I, I know that there's hope, right? I know that these things are possible yet. So many things that just compounded on me and I got into my head far enough that I told you guys, I was basically laying naked face down on my grass in my backyard. Neighbors they saw me, they're like, yep, yeah, post COVID. But I'm laying out there like literally totally surrendered and broken and, and confessing the fact that I, I don't, I got nothing. Like I, I am just, I'm in need of help. I'm in need of grace. I'm in a lot of pain. I've done everything I can counselors, friends, peers, you know, movement, eating, prayer, all of it to try to deal with it. Use my tools that I use to deal with things. You've got to have a toolbox, right? I want to work on my legs. I got to have some tools. So same thing with, with this in our hearts. But I, I came to a place where I'm like, man, it's just super heavy right now. And I'm drowning. And I've, I've got like a straw in the ocean. And I think I've got like a sip or two left. And it's not that I was going to do something harmful to myself. But it was a real place of, of, of despair and brokenness and humility and surrender and weakness. And, and for me and my faith, it's, it's funny. We try, I try to stay strong and have it all together. But the, but the line is, it's in my weakness that he's strong. It's in my weakness that actually is when freedom comes because I'm letting go. Last thing, I'm going to let you pick up on this. If I look at a situation, I've tried to come down. There's two questions I'll, I'll also ask myself, this daily practice. It's a daily practice. Two of the things that sometimes bop around are, what are my motives in this? Like, what are my motives in this thing? And, and um, what, what do I, I don't know what the other exact question was, but first one was motives and the other was something about, like, what am I, what am I, hope, what am I hoping to get in this? What's my part in this? And so when I look at that, it helps me start to filter out if I can make it unemotional and if I could just pull it back and be like, dude, you're, you're aiming in the wrong direction. That's not in line with what you believe. That's not in line with what's right. And I got to let that go and release that. So man, those are just some thoughts. There's so much here. And I'm so thankful for you taking the time to talk about things that, that really do underpin real holistic lifelong fitness.
Well, you know, it's interesting, man, too. It's like you can you can look back and and I've had a lot of reflection on, you know, I, I was sharing the story with you over dinner, how like um I was recently taken back to one of the first apartments I was in, like I was just starting this business and there were papers everywhere and I had my desk in the living room and I'm literally like, there was nothing but work. There was no enjoyment. There was just the one track focus that can come uh, with someone like me. Um, and I could like, I could take, I could feel what it felt like to be in that room. I could taste the, the hunger and the thirst for more. Um, it was such a unique time in my life too. Cause again, you, you you just, you get out of college and it's like, you do have um, a capacity to just take on so much and, and you're, and, and there's, there's so much weight that you can't almost can't even feel it. Right. Once you're buried into the ground, additional gravity, you can't even feel it. Um, but then I think about what it was like in that time. And I think about like fast forward to today, um, I had no coping mechanisms for that level of stress. You know what I'm saying? Like there was zero and I just let the stress, you know, pull the best out of me. And it did. It literally like out of necessity every day, there was just something that got done that kept pushing that needle forward where like going through similar amounts of stress today that many of us are, I guess the benefits of age, right? At 41. Um, in these times, that's when I, I now purposely, I have, I have a, a host of things I add to the mix, right? That I've been lucky to accumulate or learn over the years that just like, if I don't do this, I'm going to crack. Like it's going to take the, the, the like the, my gifts literally become a curse within the dichotomy of my brain, right? And my personality. So breathing, uh, heat, cold, walking, obviously all the movement and stuff that I do, um, prioritizing my Lakers game, like the one place I can go and just escape every night. Well, they don't play every night, but I wish they did. Um, but I, I didn't have that. So I was literally just like, you're just like in this ooze of stress and everything matters and takes on such importance. Um, so I guess I know you have, obviously you have your church, you have your faith and that's helped a lot. Your family, close personal friends, but, um, I'm not even sure where I was going with that, but you know, ultimately it's just, um, well, this is what I was going to say to that. And my, my dad who came from nothing, literally came from nothing in the deserts of North Africa. And I've talked about this many times before, but again, you always have to pretend like no one's ever listened to you before when you do these. Um, who would, even, even when he made a, a good living for himself and he came to the States after years and years of work, not even knowing the language coming here with nothing, he still would eat sardines and bread for dinner as if he was still that poor guy living in the slums of North Africa. And he had such an appreciation for just sustenance. Um, and now at this age, especially during the tough times, I'm trying to find the, the beauty. I can go walk and see the desert views, the mountains and the possibilities and the stuff that will never fully understand the power of the universe and nature. And then just, you know, the smells uh, of the, we get the Pacific ocean, uh, if we're lucky, we'll get the, the, the Pacific Ocean breeze coming through the desert at night. It's cool and crisp. You can literally taste and smell the ocean hours away in the desert. Um, it, you, you allow your senses to heighten and really appreciate um, just the fact that you're in this time of, of age for all its pros and cons, right? Uh, the coming of the robots. We're, we're literally in the, the beginning of the, the Terminator phase of existence. Um, but you're on that grass laying down and your moment of biggest weakness or one of your top moments of weakness and you get to go and have shelter and connect to the internet and watch them <laughs> saying like it, it's it's so hard in the moment but to just always pull you and that, that's what i think meditation can do like um meditation can allow you to and we talked about this many times becoming the eye in the storm and sometimes these storms don't go away and you just this is the long one to wait out and you're going to have to go out into the storm every day because we have to live and we have to we have to collect things, we have to share things, we have to keep doing things, we have to stay productive, even though we don't want to do anything sometimes. But having the ability to always come back into the eye and recuperate and recharge. And, um, you know, I, I know that's something that you, you're, you, you've had to like, there's no way you'd still be here because I know I know what you've been through 
intimately over the last you know 10 20 years and the, can you can you can you share a couple key things that has allowed you to uh stay the course like again how do you find a way to become the i man bro um gosh golly you know i i there's so many things and i could just tell you it's changed for me over time i i know there's recurring themes for me and i think it's really important that people get to start to identify what are the things that you do that actually bring you some joy and make you feel good when i was really in the thick of it i had a um an advisor a mentor say do me a favor and i want you to write down uh, you're going to make a grid on a piece of paper and you're going to put a bunch of columns and a bunch of you know lines and what i want you to do is i want you to leave this left column open and then you're going to create these four columns and it's going to be um you know zero dollars to four dollar signs it's going to be zero to the number uh four and then plus plus one two three four and plus plus it's going to be uh you know zero one d one w one m one y plus one day one month one week one year plus uh and then what he had then what he asked me to do was on the left hand column write down the things that you love to do that bring you joy bro it took me a week to figure out one thing to write down and that's i didn't even know how far away i was i didn't even know how far i drifted from the shore that i couldn't even write down something that brought me joy because i had i had allowed myself or didn't know that i got myself so deep into the hole that i wasn't even aware how far i was down like you said you know i was buried down and ultimately what it went to was you write this thing down and then on the the line across you go oh that cost me nothing you fill in that the not a one dollar sign it's really cheap i don't i don't need anybody else to do this when was the last time you did it three years you love to do it doesn't cost you anything you don't need anyone else to do this you haven't done it in three years why and so you start to look back at the things that bring life into you that speak joy into your heart and i heard you say some things and i think i'm just gonna rattle off a couple of things but I want to go back to something you said as you were talking. I just was hearing this Creed refrain in my mind, uh, and I wrote it down by the by the you know, band Creed. And it says, "said What's this life for? What's this life for? Like, what am I chasing? And when I get there, am I going to find my life? You know, when I get that bank account where I wanted to, when I get those followers on, am I going to find my life? Is that where I'm going to become enough? Is that when I'm going to be valuable enough? Is that when I'm going to have enough?" For someone else to think I matter or for me to think I matter, newsflash, you're a miracle. You already matter. It's what I never got and still have trouble thinking about for myself. Here's what's scarier. When you get there, if your money actually tells you that you're somebody, you're in trouble because now your money's your God. And when that goes, you got nothing left. That is, that is the scariest tactic. You actually get what you aimed for. And so I think about, for me, I have to keep coming back to, am I a resident of this world and is this my life? And when it comes or goes, it tells me what the quality of my life is or not, or am I a resident of something bigger? Like, who am I? Like at my foundation, what do I believe about myself and this human condition, this human existence that I'm in, why I'm here, how I got here, and what's the purpose of it? Practically speaking, you know, I heard you, it's so cool, man. I, I have recently i think when you feel more strain and you're in it more and you're charging for something big first of all we have a tendency to miss the mission when we're on the mission just recently i'm working on a really i could never do all the work i can't get it done that's how much work there is and so i've got to manage my time and my energy for press and what i've realized is because of this this sprint that i'm in i'm i'm not feeling inside good about how i'm relating to my family i'm getting a little curt I'm getting so man practice time right it's 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 again it gives me an opportunity to practice but for me little moments just like fitness okay i don't have two hours to train anymore so what could i do with 10 minutes two minutes one second that would start putting stuff back into my bank account smelling flowers man I, right now my orange trees are budding and the it's only going to happen once a year and i'm like this is a miracle and i'm gonna i'm gonna stay in here and for, i'm gonna miss this and it's amazing how the olfactory senses are connected to your brain, your limbic system, and how they make you feel. There's science behind this, but I'm like, I'm smelling that. I'm watching my hummingbirds. I get so much joy having like fresh nectar available for the hummingbirds and watching them be fed and be cared for. Listening to my daughters talk about things that matter to them. Gratitude. You mentioned gratitude, feeling the breeze, looking up and being like, my gosh, I'm on a rock spinning in the middle of space. And I'm, I'm, I talk. 
I'm alive. Like I've got, I could turn the faucet on and the water, water will run until I shut it off. There's people that won't find it today. And I know that's hard when you're in it and you're feeling beat up. And it's like, all, like we talked about at dinner. Yeah, all that first world problems and all that other stuff is real. But when you're in it, when you feel pain and when you're worn down, your stuff matters to you. So the tools, I love nature. I love play. When I'm moving or playing in nature in particular, when I just forget about the cares of the world, there's no sets, no reps, no time. I got some music maybe. I'm bouncing around in a trampoline. And the next thing you know, I come to and it's like, oh, crap, I got to get out of here. I got to get moving on. That stuff feeds me, having like-minded people around me. Um, you know, like you said, having gratitude every night, but fine. And I'll, I'll pause on this to let, let you run. But, uh, every night uh, my dogs, I know your dog for you, they just give me this moment of love and joy. And I love watching them be happy. But, um, I, at night I've now, you know, habit stacking, it's hard to add a lot of stuff in your life. We've talked about fitness by addition, fitness by subtraction. Sometimes by subtraction is easier, but by addition, you got to be you have to be super motivated or you got to be sneaky about how you start to insert it like a football program. And so now it's like I picked something that I did regularly that I just stacked, habit stacked. I stacked on this daily review of my day and, and genuinely just finding things that I'm grateful for without trying to be grateful, without expecting something from it and just looking over my day and saying, oh man. And as I start to think about it, another thing pops up and another thing pops up and it's easy for me now. And it's really, a, it's a really a cool reminder for me that man, it's out there every day. I just got to free myself up enough to look for it and appreciate it. You know, man, uh, I, I get one kind of like a phrase, I think to summarize all of that is the importance of scheduling joy. It's so sad that like we live in this type of fast paced, whatever it takes, we, we need to, right? It's, it, it's, a, it's competitive, we're overpopulated. The speed at which things happen now is just breathtaking. Um, and it's tough to keep up, especially as you get older and you don't really, you're not even interested in those things because you know it's important, hmm. what's really important and you wanna prioritize time for that. But if you don't stay abreast of trends and what's going on, like life literally can just pass you by. That's another conversation. But, uh, you know, I shared with you guys, too, I, got hit with some kind of brutal news. Um, we, I would plan to come on and visit you guys. Initially, like I canceled in like 24 hours later. I'm like, you know what? Life is too short. And, and by the way, like this, this is joy that I have to schedule. Getting together with you guys. We talk for six hours straight over dinner and can, it can give me six, those six hours can give me six months of energy. So no, no, no news is worth getting in the way of that. Like, you know, for the things that bring you joy, they might be unique, right? For me, like anytime that I, I sometimes I find myself, I haven't sang in a couple of days. Well, that's not, that's not normal for me because if I, I'm not in a good state, unless like, it's not just singing songs. Like I, I'll, I'll sing, I'll communicate through songs sometimes. Just, it's, it's just, it's weird. It, it's a big part of my eccentricities, but when I'm not doing that, then I find myself, then things get real serious. Things get, um, the perspective is gone, right? So it could be as simple as like making sure that you sang today. <laughs> I mean, like, I know this sounds stupid, but, um, we all have these different things. And right. You talked about the dog, um, routine. And I've said this many, many times, the most challenging times in my life, fitness has gotten me through because that is something I have complete control over for the most part. Right. Uh, as long as I have my health. Um, I can continue to invest in it, right? I can continue to move and I can do these other things. Um, but having the structure of a day, like from start to finish and, and, and like to have been, to have some time where you can rest, but to also have been so productive that at the end of the day, like no trouble falling asleep here because, you know, I, I, I maximize this day in terms of I invested in, uh, my family, I invested in myself, I invested in the people I'm trying to reach and, and serve. And, um, but like I see with my, do my dog always has a great day because she gets food when she wakes up, she gets, uh, her pool play. She gets her midday walk. She gets her afternoon nap with me. Cause I need, I, if I don't nap now, yes, I could do an extra hour of work there, 
but it's probably not going to be good work. And without that nap, I can't recharge and do more good work later in the day because having to wake up around all this stuff. Um, she gets her evening meal right after her 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 additional play. Uh, she gets her something. And I'm saying like, as long as she's comfortable with those same things every single day. In fact, if one thing is off, if that nap doesn't happen at the, at the typical time, I can tell like she's wondering what's going on. So I, I share that because um, I think there's such a desire in all things to, to find variety. Mm. You know, whether it's your food or your exercise or um, you just get sick of doing the same boring things every day. But um, I'm not like that. I, in fact, I, I love routine. In fact, the routine is just I like to be able to go on autopilot, do the work, um, and then find find that free time later in the day. But um, that really, when, when you see a dog like, oh, this is great. You got her place. There's play, food, uh, affection, um, naps. I mean, what what more do you want? Um, that that does help, and I think a lot of people see that in their kids too, because people they they can shield their kids from a lot of the stresses of adulthood. Um, you don't want to do do all of that because they need to be aware of what's coming and get ready for it and give them those strategies and, and wisdom. But um, we're going to shift gears here in a second. But it's just find your routine. People listening, you, you got you got to you got to fall in love with it, and that 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 is the next step, right? It's finding a routine and then finding all the ways that you can love that routine. Like, how can you find a way to wake up an extra, uh, find joy in waking up an extra hour early? Well, I find the joy in it because I get to see the sunrise, mm. and it, there's a peace, and it allows me to take the extra time I need to get this old body ready to go. I can do a little heat. And I can stretch and I can ease into my day. Um, you know, so let, let's, let's, do you have anything to, to add to finish up before we kind of switch gears? Yeah, man. Oh, gosh, this is so great. Uh, you know, I, I wanted to share a couple more things. I think what, what helps with that, right? You know, one is having a higher why, you know, for me, being others minded. When I catch myself, oh, I need to have half of that pizza. And oh, you start to get into this, man, take, I can get more. Um, you talked about, I think another thing I wanted to highlight, what I heard you say was a thing that I remind myself and, and, and people that I coach or peers of mine, pay attention to where you feel the spirit of joy, where you feel welcome, where, you know, the cheers, you know, people want to go where somebody knows your name, whatever those things are, just be aware, start paying attention to that. And it's probably a sign that you want to lean more into that and then practice the areas of discomfort. Don't just ignore them. Like, be curious about that because it's an awesome opportunity to learn and to, you know, nothing changes if nothing changes. So we can just keep tuck it away. It's not going to get any better. Newsflash, the cancer is going to get worse. And I don't mean to say that in a in a in an unthoughtful way for people that struggle with that, but they get that. If I don't deal with this, if I don't treat it, it, it it's not going to go away and get better on its own. Um, I also had written down. Uh, this this thought for me one and I, I've really thought about it. I'm I'm trying really hard because life is just changing. It is, and I've experienced a life without what is this life because we didn't have tech. But I think about if the first thing I do when I get in the morning is wake up and look at this thing. Think about this. I've just started to rest. My body's trying to heal. I've got this hormone cascade. I've come down to this parasympathetic relaxed state, which well, some of that depends upon the day and how I pre got into my sleep and. But you get it. The body is actually trying to recover and rest. And and right out of the gate, I'm like, whoa. Like the first thing I give myself is, well, what do I need to do? And I now I can't, there's no going back. Once I unlock that email, once I unlock that text message, once I see that thing on social media that gets my brain spinning, I've lost my window to come to, to be in the place that gives me, sets, sets the stage, to be in a place. You talked about I, one of two things for me. In a, in a raging sea, by the way, expectations, storms are going to come. Challenges are going to happen. In my faith, you used to think about, oh, when I really get there, everything's going to be great and I'm going to retire. Wrong. As I get grown, more challenges will come my way because God's like, I've equipped you for this. You don't retire. More storms, more challenges. That's the expectation. But take heart because I've equipped you and I've prepared you so that they don't bounce you around like a buoy in the ocean, getting tossed to and fro wherever the ocean wants to throw you. You're like a rock 
which that waves crashed it against and it doesn't budge. Yeah, the storm is still there, but you're on a completely different foundation. And so in the end, I think about when I'm starting to get caught up in the cares of the world, what I do, who I do it for, what I get, what did they get, what didn't I get, what it's going to be like tomorrow, why was it like this in the past, why don't I have, like, when I start getting caught up in all of that, man, the only direction there for me is dis-ease, disease, distress, and, and just, I don't, and it's useless, because I can't control any of it. So I might as well just come back and work on the only thing that I can, myself, my thoughts, back to the, back to the back to the lab. Last thing you mentioned, I just dealt with this the other day. I'm in a grind moment right now, and it's not work that I'm great at or necessarily love to do because I'm on a computer and I'm typing and I'm here and I'm an as-you-go guy out there doing, you know, like moving. So it's been challenging. And what I realized was, oh my gosh, like the same different. It's beautiful outside. There's little clouds in the sky. So instead of sitting in here in my little office for, for 12 hours, I'm out back at the table and the wind is going and I'm watching the hummingbirds and I'm doing my work and maybe there's a song and it's just reminding myself there is a different way that I can do this and I get to choose how to do it that way. I get to choose that, but I got to remind myself and it's okay because I'm not perfect and I'll learn from that too and so will everybody listening to us and man, we can just relate to all, anyone who's listening to you, we can relate to to those struggles and that growth and those pain. And, and trust me, at 51 years old, um, I, I didn't know half of what I thought I know. And I thought it'd be a lot further than I was. And I'm still working on it, but I'm excited because I'm chipping away at this flesh. I'm chipping away at this stuff that just doesn't serve me, that can't tell me who I am, that can't give me true meaning in life. And I'll say this last thing, just that really landed on me. When my wife, Wendy, and I went did a supported some missionaries in Africa, South Africa, a couple of years ago. And we were led into this, I mean, the KwaZulu Nation, KwaZulu Natal, we were led into this village. And we went in to see this woman who was happened to be of faith and she had broken her hip. She was 88 years old. So she was confined to this little cot. We're talking, you know, BJ, a, a cement one room structure, open door with like a curtain hanging on it walk into this thing. She didn't speak English. We just started singing this worship song that we were singing to her. And this woman sat there, not knowing us from a hole in the wall. We're not her color. We're not her people. We're not her whatever. The joy on this woman's face, the peace that this woman had with nothing, it reminds me, I don't need anything to be grateful and joyful and happy. I've just got to work at the environment that I live in now and the pressures of that environment. And it's just opportunity for me to grow and practice. You had a catastrophic knee injury, essentially in the prime of your life. Um, you, I, I, I want you to tell the story, but like from what I remember of it and, and tell it in full, cause it's a good one. Um, you had just like tried out for the new England Patriots and then you were working on wall street or trying to uh, raise money for a, a startup. And then this crazy thing happened, and essentially you you changed the, the, your physical trajectory forever at a very young age. Um, and I've been I've talked uh, in depth about you know because uh, we're both like dealing with some old man stuff too. Like athletics are amazing, mm. and, and a lot of uh, why we're here today is because of the discipline and the resilience and the team building that we learned during those times. But there's also, there's an accelerative wear and tear from competitive athletics, um, just as there's wear and tear mentally from competitive uh, mental pursuits, uh, whether it's academia or professional. And uh, not being able to do things you used to do and just, this, by the way, we're all facing this as we get older, but mm. Athletes tend to face these things sooner because of injury and, again, the wear and tear we're talking about. Um, and I know a lot of people right now, are they're, 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 they're starting to get arthritis for the mm -hmm. first time, right? Um, and that that's – now you've got to set aside time in your day to manage this. This is a new condition. It's going to be with you forever now. It's going to accelerate, and you can feel however you want about it. It's there. Um, but take me through – tell this story, and then I, the thing is because you've, you've, you've been on – DVD shoots where you have to like 
this is a full week of stuff and you've got to do and show things that you just don't know what's about to happen like this could be the last day for this knee i don't know what's going to happen i remember being on the set of the speed shred uh program and th that week uh i had already had a permanently damaged knee that week uh <laughs> that that week was like a decade of damage I did to day one. It, it was swelled up, and I had four more days to go, and uh, just found a way to get it in because it was it's what was required with that unique opportunity in the time of my life, and I was able to get through it. But it, it came at a great cost. And we were talking about Jeremy Scott's got some new shirts coming out called uh, uh, "What Did It Cost Me Everything?" That one cost me a lot, uh, and uh, but you you find a way. And I, I remember just being marveling at how like. I knew some of your limitations and I, you could never tell when you were on camera and doing workouts. And part of the thing too, is you can know how to create workouts that like cater to the, to the, to the weakness. Um, but talk about this injury and talk about like how, cause again, this is what we do. We, we, we have to, we have to be able to use our bodies and show things. And it's also like personally, like that individual pursuits. Uh, I think part of why maybe you and I maybe struggle sometimes uh, with motivation is because we can't attack our own physical training the way we used to because of the business requirements and other things, right? Uh, but it's especially difficult when there's an ailment, there's a limitation. So I just wanted you, I want to share you share that because uh, as I, you know, as I share things about like you know how, how tough it is to get out of out of a chair after ten minutes of sit, s sitting or you know uh, old man stuff. Um, because it's relatable and people are going through that. It, it's I think it's it's nice to hear because people think, oh, I I can't do this stuff anymore. There's something to be can't do anymore. But uh, you've you've always found a way, and I just wanted to kind of, I wanted you to share that story and two guys that have some like real serious knee issues that some people won't even know. They won't even know like because we keep finding a way. And I, I'm I'm sure there's some wisdom in people dealing with joint pain because as far as I can tell, based on how many ads I get with pain pills. And all these documentaries uncovering disgusting nature of big pharma, um, taking advantage of people's pain and getting them addicted. Uh, pain and suffering is just something you have to get comfortable with. You got to manage it, but you can't allow it to take over your life. Oof. It's so hard, man. And I have come to have so much empathy for people that have things where they feel chronic pain um, or they feel chronic suffering. Something has happened to them they didn't expect that has taken away something from them that gives them joy. Uh, that That is a way for them to navigate this 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 life that can be really challenging sometimes. You know, I'm going to go, uh, I'm going to go over here first and then I'm going to come back to the story real quick and I'm going to, I'm going to make this quick. But in the end, I've tried to take a step back and I've, I've looked at fitness as a persona, as a personality, like say I was its PR agent. I think fitness would be like, they, they would come into my office and they'd have a conversation with me and fitness would be like, dude, this is not who I am. I want to start sending out libel uh, letters. I want to start stopping defamation of character. And I want to, I, I, like, we, I need a campaign for people to tell, because this is not who I am. This ain't right. Like, stop using my name. And so when I think about fitness and some of those things, I've thought about, and I've got an, you know, an aside to this, people want what they want for the reasons they want it. That's why I talk about you got to understand who you are. You got to understand why you want and why it's important to you. And then really, is it really worth spending what I want to spend to get it? A lot of people never have a chance to have a coach walk through that with them. And so many people be like, oh my gosh, it's actually not what I want. So all that time, effort, and energy, you don't spend it on that. So really look into that. But fitness would say, my job is to serve you, not steal from you. That's it. Like, I, I, I didn't sign up to hurt you. And that's just not pillar to pillar. So, oh, I'm going to do burpees because I think I got to do burpees and they're blowing up my back and my knees because I think I got to lose weight and burpees is the way to do it. Nope, fitness, that's not fitness. And, oh, if I don't have these abs that I don't have, then my mental fitness is junk. No, I, didn't, I, don't, I don't want your physical fitness to steal your mental either. So across the pillars, that's, that's when fitness works really well. And you said it, man. It's you do what you can in the way that matches your identity. There's a universe of movement. It's unlimited. And you have the right to explore it and discover it and make it work for you. And it changes over time. And sometimes I can't get what I want from it. And that's okay. I got to surrender to that. Now, at 26 years old, when I was moving into fitness and wellness, it was my profession. I was as fit as I had ever been. I was getting super excited about it, putting all these pieces together. 
had a freak accident trying to raise some money for a startup company in, on Wall Street, slipped off a ledge, dropped eight feet, leg lands underneath me, tried to protect my head, compound fractures, destroy. My, my foot's just hanging upside down. I'm on the street, 50 degrees in the pouring rain for like an hour. I'm lucky I can walk. Um, everything changed. And, and so it takes, I'm wrestling with that because I feel like a caged animal. I'm trying to tell my body what to do instead of listening to what it will give me and then flowing with it, you know, like Bruce Lee, like be like water. No, I'm, I'm telling it what it's going to do and I'm causing more damage and I don't care. I'll, I'll, I'll manipulate my hip so that I can do this thing up for what to do, to, to do a lunge, to do a, like when I look back the insanity of it for, for what? What was my purpose? What was my reason? No one talked. I didn't talk through that with myself or I wasn't willing to listen to somebody. But at about 34, so this is eight years later, bro, I'm down at in Louisville for a uh, thing with Pat, Pat Rigsby and Nick Barry and maybe 35, I don't know. And there was a break between uh, one of some of our sessions in the afternoon. And so I walked down to this park in Louisville. It's right on the water and it's beautiful. It was a beautiful day. I happened to look outside. I'm like, my gosh, I love outside. I love nature. I love roaming around places I haven't seen before. So I'm like, I'm just going to take a walk down. Yeah, find this park. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to move a little bit. So I start moving around and I just feel for my body and I know enough and I've got my tools and I'm, I'm just flowing with what it'll give me and having fun and doing my thing. And I do like this 25 minute workout. Then I'm sitting on this ledge, BJ. And I'm looking around at all this really cool stuff. And I start, I start going, not in a negative way, but I'm like, gosh, like if I could parkour, I would jump off this and jump off that and climb up this thing. And I'd sprint over there and I'd do over there. And I sat there and I'm like, but I can't do those things. And then it hit me, right? It hit me that I just walked thousands of steps. I just felt the grass beneath my feet. I just felt the sun on my face. I could see the water and all of these things that I was looking at, these colors and these experiences. And I'm like, there's millions of people that'll never see a color in their life. There's millions of people that'll never feel warm sand under their toes. They'll never feel grass under their feet. They can't even walk. There's millions of people that are never going to be able to hear the birds chirping and like all this stuff that I just threw away because, oh, I, I could do more. It's a comparison game. And it just really hit me, man, to be grateful for what I've got, to take what it gives me, but then not to just rest on my laurels. And this is what I love about you. Maybe I can move more. And maybe I want to move more. So what's what? what is that going to require of me? Does that require me going to see a doctor? Does that require me eating differently? Does that require me doing different tissue work or setting aside time for my, re my rehab or my prehab or stretching after a workout when I don't want to do it? So there comes this moment. I say I want this, but am I willing to do the actions that say I require it? It's a struggle all my life. Like intention, action. Either my intention isn't motive, isn't, Pure enough, strong enough, real enough, or my action plan is flawed. And so in the end, I've just been super grateful. I'll tell you one of the, I could tell you all the places I've gone. I've had moments feeling better and then not, uh, you know, then you get caught in the, the trap of chasing the next great doctor and the next great solution so that you can what? So that I can do what I think I want to do to be the human being I already am and enjoy life. Dude, same pattern. It's crazy. But I remember going onto one of the DVDs. I don't remember which one it was. And all of my tricks didn't work. And uh, I can remember, like, I couldn't even body weight squat down, J, uh, BJ, to get to, like, a chair without excruciating pain in my knee and my hip. And I'm like, great. I got to go on set in, like, four days. I can't even move. I'm gonna, I got to cancel this thing. This has never happened. This, God, God rest his soul, this, uh, this therapist in Boston, someone referred me to him and he was an interesting character. He was actually mentored by this woman who was JFK's doctor and she, Janet Travell, helped write the trigger point mapping book. Um, so she met this guy randomly when he was 21, shook his hand. He could feel the warmth in her hand. She could feel the warmth in his hand. She, he was there because he was going to do public health. He was going to uh, intern from Harvard. She's like, I can feel you're a healer. Would you be willing to spend time with me so I can teach you some things? And he's like, okay. So this guy's like 78. He's a character. He gets me on this table. He's doing like this work on me. I don't feel the typical, oh my gosh, like breathing, sweating, deep tissue. Like he's going, it's like a half an hour beach. I have prayed about it before. I prayed about everything. Ever since I first started, every single thing I've ever done, I've prayed about. I think it's important I share that. Everything, everything, big, small, 
because I can't do it on my own and I need help. So I prayed about this. I get on the table. He does this work. He taps, he's behind me. He taps my chest and he's like, there you go, my boy. And in my mind, I say to myself, how am I going to break it to this guy that he, this didn't help at all? Cause I didn't feel anything like I, I, I felt a little twinge maybe in like my adductor, he found a trigger point and so I'm like, oh man. So I roll, I swing my legs off the side of the table. I stand up. I'm like, oh, bro, body weight squats, completely pain free. <laughs> I look at him. He's like, you had some triggers in there. He's like, but did you have faith that this would work? And I said, I did. And he said, well, then go be well. And he wasn't even a man of faith. He's like, go be well. And I, so there were all these crazy moments and different things that I've had to do over my career to be able to do the next thing. And then ultimately I've had to surrender things because I'm like, the, the juice just is not worth the squeeze. And there's a maturity that I had to get through, through some, some mistakes and, you know, some rookie moves and some, some lack of intellect where I was like, wow, looking back, I, I was really willing to pay that price for that. Yeah. You know, what's uh, interesting too. Uh, Cause again, I, it's been such a, a catch-22, like many things, where um, it's so unfortunate these injuries had happened because I just think, oh, where could I be today had those injuries not happened? Um, but ultimately, it would have just advanced myself likely more than anything else. Um, and I, I want to do great things. I want to enjoy life to its fullest. But what I've been able to learn and unlock and – like we were joking too, like a tread season. So uncle baby biscuits gets a little moody, but I'm just thinking of like how I handle uh caloric restriction combined with stress in business and life simultaneously. Like the, in my twenties, I would literally live like I'd live on an edge. I mean, like you, you can see it in my eyes right now, like that, that I'd be, but now it's like, again, it is, it is, again, it's, it's finding peace and, suffering it's a it's a it's the wrong word and whenever i say it, people are like well this this sounds unhealthy well it's no it's not because life is it has a natural suffering to it and being comfortable with that and getting the discipline of uh, of fasting and um saying no to to uh, a more another helping right mm. uh, that would really satisfy you when the 80 percent that you got you got and that's good and there's there's actually a real appreciation to leaving that extra 20 percent uh for tomorrow or um but I, you've learned so much and again uh how i can get in an in incredible shape now uh like it almost i almost feel like it's i'm cheating you know because like i i used to think i had to, i had to make it as much suffering as possible right and do the hardest possible modes of things where you know now i can I can pepper and strength and mobility work throughout the day. I can do my midday weighted walk. I can box, sled, and do pull work. And I can get just as, if not leaner, than I was 20 years ago. Like, I, I'm going to be in better shape. Maybe not like strength, but overall shape in a couple months at 41 and a half than I was at 21 and a half. And uh, it's certainly not as easy as it used to be because now I've got like the, the knee continues to degrade and it's it, structurally, you touched it. it. It's the kneecap just goes where it wants to go. And, and, and it was that way 21 years ago. So again, being grateful for the fact that I found a way to keep doing this stuff and share knowledge. And, and, and if the stuff that I do works for my knee, it's going to work for almost everyone else's knee out there for the most part, right? That, that functions. Um, and then, you know, sometimes I smile to myself too. It's like, wow, it's actually pretty amazing how smart I've gotten at this. And again, you know, you talk about all the things that are required now. I was sharing that like when my left knee swells now, like in the past, like it go away in a couple of days. Not, now it'll stay with me for a full month. Um, and then I, I, I now find ways to recover while I work, whether it's an hour of the editing video on my phone with my legs up against the wall with ice. I share that picture. It looks like a cyborg science experiment, but I used to like get discouraged by that and depressed. I'm like, oh, why, why do I have to do this? No, this is just now what I have to do. And I find joy in it because this, this makes, this allows me to manage this. Here's, here's what I'm getting to too. Like when an injury would happen, the ego of it, I wouldn't want anyone to know. 
So I wouldn't talk about it or I, I, I wouldn't ice because I didn't want to show the weakness of icing. This is really, I mean, this is some fucked up shit, but like this happens to you when like, you're almost like trying, you're in denial of what it is. No, this is a condition. I got to deal with it. It's stupid. Why not like do this good thing for my body while I'm, I can do it. Um, or why, you know, I can throw my legs in a norm attack and check email. I can, um, you know, I can have my midday shake with my, my legs in cold water. Right. So this is what I'm saying. Like you just start to like find the ways and, and not, instead of being like pissed about it, be grateful to the fact that you have the ability to, to do it, to you know, you invest in amenities that can enhance your quality of life and keep you in the game. Um, it all comes back to uh, the lessons you learn when you're young, managing injuries, managing defeat, um, and, and, and not and, and the moments like, and I had this moment too, I was walking, I was on my midday walk and uh, I felt this like, intense twinge in my knee it had been swelling and, and and typically this put me in a state of depression and i'm like you know what I, I think it's time i go fully barefoot you know what i'm saying like with with in stride and like oh yeah and it's probably time i finally see a doctor about this and look at a, a reconstruction or a replacement it's not what i wanted at 41 uh it's typically what's happening to people in their 60s 70s and 80s especially uh someone who's in this business they're, they're, they're certainly it's are, are, are his methods wrong does he really even know what he's doing it's like no you have no idea like i, I had a doctor at, at 21 tell me this knee was done like don't run don't squat just this is arthritic already um so i guess what i'm getting at with that is um i say it all the time focus on what you can do not what you can't and ha have some joy and what what this really is, it's individualizing your journey. It's uniquely yours, right? Your knee injury is different from mine. It's completely uh, taken us off course of maybe what we wanted for our own selfish pursuits. But it's also, uh, it's really made us resilient. It's really made us uh, adaptable. That adaptability transcends your workout, right? Like someone, they see a swollen knee and they think, okay, I'm just gonna wait till the swelling's so I'm just gonna stop and I'll wait till the, no, no. The train keeps going. Hmm. Now it's isometrics. Now it's your maybe maybe you have to, to have to just double up on this side and, and give and, and make this a training cycle on this side while this side rests, or go heavy upper body core, or you know find the lowest impact ways you can get your heart rate up and work your muscle mass and keep it as age is trying to steal it from you, right? Um, so, uh, like, take me take me through some of the how you how you manage it, how you because again fifty one incredible shape still um it's still capable of doing amazing things on any given day but the cost is too great now to do that stuff on a regular basis um because again like the time required to, to uh get back to where to, to, to square one that you know those that that's gone and that's okay because we, we had that ability at some point you can't keep it forever right mm -hmm. um so i just wanted to share that because i know i know there's a lot of people that have stopped working out entirely for many reasons, right? Financial stress, lack of time, um, pain. Uh, they're also like, they've just given up to age. Um, and that's okay. We're all going to go through cycles of that where you get depressed or you feel defeated. But again, like I I'm telling you around that, that, like, I know what I got, I know what you got. Like these are like, these would end people's athletic pursuits period in most cases. Because the time required to treat it, manage it, work around it, um, there's no blueprint for it. Yeah, man. Um, gosh, bro. Jeez, uh, where to go? I, you know, I, I, I've, I've always said this is for myself. I'm, I'm one of the. You guys laugh, you and Jay, especially because you guys are just wired so different. The work you do that no one sees is just. I can attest to the fact that anyone listening, you have, it's just amazing, man. I literally say to myself, how do these guys do this? Um, but I think about, for me, I'm like, you know, I've still got so much work to do in all the areas of taking care of myself. And it's like, when am I actually really going to start to take care of myself because of the fact that I value myself? And so what I've always said is fitness isn't a time and money problem because if that was the case then people wouldn't stand in line at starbucks to get starbucks coffees 
or, or binge Netflix because they've got time and money. It's a value problem. And in the end, you know, we'll wash our car two hours because everyone wants to look at how cool our car is, but I don't have time for fitness or I stop fitness because I can't bench anymore. I stop fitness because I can't sprint anymore. Well, then whatever it was that you wanted from sprinting, that you wanted from bench, that your flesh needed to prove, now I can't do that, so fitness is out. Like, And you don't have to feel bad about this. You just get to look at that and go, dang, what was it about that that I was trying to get, that I was trying to grab, that I was trying to reach for, that made me re- like let go of taking care of myself and feeling good. It could be literally walk your dog. You know, I think about, for me, you, you, I heard, first of all, mindset. I've been in and out of them throughout my life, but I heard you say, I can, I can, I can, I can. Not I can't, I can't, I can't. I just heard you say a lot of I cans, which gives you an opportunity to make a choice. And it gets to be yours. What Like one minute of movement's a miracle. Like science is already saying what that starts to do in the brain and our mindset and our state set. Four minutes, you actually start to change the way that uh, neuro, uh, chemicals, hormone cascades and neurochemicals start to work. 10 minutes is actually a state, a, a real state change. So even a little goes a long way and they all affect the other parts. And so I, I think about all the times I tried to force something and didn't get what I want and how frustrated I was. And then taking that out of the gym, fitness should leave the gym and go into your other areas of your life your relationships, your mindset, like leaving out of the gym. Now you're frustrated and you're angry and that didn't even work for you. And then I think about the times when I just like have a dance party with my daughters and I, I'm able to move the way I want to move. I can manage that. I can flow. I can be free, like five, six songs. We want to play another one. I want to play another one. And I'm sweating and I've moved in like a hundred different ways. And I've used like you know, a kajillion different neural pathways. And I've got all this amazing fitness stuff that happened. And I just feel incredible. And it just carries over to the next thing. So I got these two dynamics, force, pride, pride, get angry, get stuck in it. Like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. Ugh. Or I can do some more of this and be like, wow, man, I'm just so grateful for what I've got. And and I'm going to wrestle through with what I don't have. So that's one. The other thing you mentioned um, is, uh, and it is what it is sometimes, man. It just, it, it, what am I going to do? Like, I can control the things I can control. I've got to release what I can't. So I'm going to try to, like, the more, more talk, more stress, more push, more prod, more worry, more whatever, and I'm not going to fix it anyway. Oh, my gosh, what a waste. Like, Dave, you've got other things to think about, man. You've got other things to, you have limited time. Like go do something different. Um, But you mentioned this one thing at the beginning and it hit me because I've thought about this. Oh, by the way, where you're coming to and I heard you talking about how you've, there's hope for everyone on this who hears this because look how far we've come. You've told me that you have actually looked at, you said if your past self looked at yourself now, your past self in that moment would be like, what have you done with your life? I don't even know who you are. You are soft, you're weak, you're an idiot. And it's like, what a transformation, bro. And when I hear you talk about things like this shift to barefoot, you've learned that. And when I say the word learned, that means practice, suffering, wrestling, mistakes, discovery, getting back up, commun- like learned is a big word. You've learned how to be content in it. And I start to hear Fitness master craftsmanship. This is where you start to get really good at what you do because you've released what you can't control and you're willing to adapt to what, what comes your way. But we, you said something about suffering and there's this, this thought came to me, is life, God, whatever, trying to make you suffer to make you suffer? Is that its point? Is it, does it want to make you suffer? Does it want to make you hurt? Does it want to make you feel pain? And it's like, as I've leaned into that for myself, I've got caught in that narrative and I get crushed by that narrative. And the reality of it is when I really look at it, I step back and I look at it every time that I've had suffering, suffering, usually stress usually comes from, I am, I think I'm at where I don't want to be. And I think I want to be here or have this. So there's a gap in where I am and what I want and what I want and what I don't have. And there's a stress that comes from that state that I'm thinking myself into because I can't 
just be grateful enough with where I'm at and what am I learning from this? So when I step back and I look at this suffering, some of it is real. And, but others, it's like self-imposed. And it's like, is this suffering meant to crush me? Is it meant to punish me? And when I look back at it all, BJ, I realize, oh my gosh, I was thinking this way in that moment. I treated this person that way. I was holding on to this. I was trying to force this. I was trying to get this. My motive was way off. My desire was really ugh, not, not healthy at all. And it's like, oh, the distress that you were sending in my life was actually your kindest opportunity. It's like, oh, my hamstring twinges. Nah, whatever, dude. Like a yellow light blinking, red light blinking because the bridge is out. Nah, I'm just going to blow right through it and crash. It's these things come because there is something for me to learn in them. And it's this gift of grace because if I'm willing to be taught by it, there's this harvest of amazingness that will come if I'm willing to listen to what it's trying to teach me. But man, in the moment, it sucks. But I've just felt like I can make a choice either life, your God, your higher power, whatever it is that someone believes. Yeah, it's it's just all it's designed to do and all it's ever been designed to do is crush you, punish you, make you suffer. How's that feel? Now, yeah, it's never going to get better. Or there's something in here that's going to make me better. I just can't see it yet. That's the work, dude. And it's going to be lifelong for me. You know, so it's one of those things, right? And when I'm trying to say this in a way that like hopefully hits someone who really needs this right now, because I I've been there where I won't allow myself to do something a better way. Cause it just appears easier. doesn't take on the, the essence of, of challenge that caters to, to the ego that, uh, you know, it gets you where you are today, but it also holds you back from everything that you really can achieve in life. Right. Um, so you can go out there right now and you can sprint, for a minute, for 10 seconds. I can also sprint for 10 seconds, shoulder level in water. And the reality is, and people won't believe me, I can get a better training effect in the water, not just because of the fact that I'm eliminating the impact forces, not just because of the fact that the recovery is almost instantaneous, and the only thing I can't do in the water as effectively as I can on the land is that it, it's not going to carry over to the specificity of moving faster on land necessarily. You've got to actually do that work. But technically, if you're not a sprinter and your goal is to get in shape and train with intensity and you've got a foot, a knee, a hip, a back that, you know, if I do these sprints right now, yeah, it's going to max out my calorie burn and my metabolism. I'm going to feel like an animal and I'm going to feel like the man for about – an hour, but the next three to five days, I'm going to be done. And we can apply this to anything with intensity, right? Like you're, you're caught chasing that barbell squat workout that um, makes you feel like a man. That takes an hour and that literally takes you the next three to seven days to feel right again. Or that 10 minutes of step ups or lunges you could do that actually will give you a better overall workout that the next day you might feel a little bit of fatigue, but you'll be okay. And you can do, so this is what I'm saying. It's so for me, a big part of the aging process. I've had to fall in love with the smarter, easier ways of doing things and actually finding joy in that, that I don't have to crush myself like I used to. Not that it's not that I can't, I, I, I don't want to. That's, that's, I finally got to that place where like, no, I don't, I don't want to. You know what I mean? Like, there's no regret about the fact that I just did something that doesn't hurt me. I could have made it much harder on myself, but why? Why, why was I finding, why was I needing to do that? What was missing in me? Uh, what was wrong with me that required that? Uh, and again, the, the, that, that's, that's, a, that's another conversation, but I just want to encourage people, uh, you know, we're just finishing the first quarter of 2024 at the time of recording this. Use quarter two. A lot of us, a lot of people get in the mode of like getting in shape for summer. I love that. Take advantage of that because it's important. I want you to feel good about the way you look and move. And I want you to get out there and, and, and put that to work during the beauty that is the summer. How many more seasons do we get? How many more summers do we get? Um, so I love that. But use Q2 as an opportunity to find the lowest impact, 
the least abrasive, like how, make this the, the easiest way that you achieve your conditioning and make that the challenge and, and, and see how much you can learn and cover. And also like, so you, you have to like do it. So, you know, like, yeah, I, wow, this is great to know. Maybe you go back to sprinting on land again, if you want. And I'm, by the way, I'd love to get back to that at some point too. And to get back to the barefoot piece too, it wasn't that I, I've been doing barefoot a long time, but it's got, the knee has gotten so bad that um, if I don't have a perfect foot strike, uh, because of how unstable that kneecap is. And I, there's no shoe that I've, I've found yet that has, has allowed me to – because when I go barefoot, it doesn't happen. I don't feel any pain. Because, again, I, it's, it's, I'm getting used to, like, walking on cement with weight for 40 to 60 minutes at a time, um, and that's good. That's, that's a nice challenge. Um, uh, but, but that's what I meant by that earlier when we were talking about that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not new to barefoot training. But, that, that, again – you get to the, you, in a way, it's stripping me down to what, what it should be. It's like, it's a forced, like, sh you don't need shoes. Shoes have only gotten in the way, right? And th that's the mindset. It's like, no, I, it's, it's great because now I can go walk on any surface w without pain and discomfort. And some people are listening like, these two motherfuckers need professional help. And you're not wrong. But we keep going. We keep going. The hits keep coming. It's the Bruce Lee mentality, be water. That's really what it is. Um, so if I can't do this today, that's fine. I have 10 different things I can immediately fall back into so I can get my, my dopamine. I can get my blood circulating. I can get my muscles and joints what they need to stay in the game. And that's the challenge I take to you. It, it, it's, you talked about that. Uh, I have so many workouts and I can't even share. Like I, I make workouts for people. I, I, don't, I mean – that's the job. Like I'm trying to make workouts for people. They, they, they and, and I've shared things I've done in the past, but like today I, I can't share this stuff. Uh, me out dancing, uh, d doing the, the hip gyrations I do to get like a hip mobility workout and then the cardio at the end of that for a guy my size um, or the tug. I, I've shared like tug of war I do with my dog and stuff. And I know people scoff at it. It's like, there's no way this guy, well, I get an incredible arm pump when I'm holding a 50 pound dog overhead and she's getting her grip strength. I, I know people, so part of me is like, do I start sharing that stuff? I don't know. What I'm saying is those workouts really only serve me, though, because that's what I that's what I have to do, or that's the only thing I feel up to do today. You see what I'm saying? Um, so take Q2 as a challenge. Make it as easy on yourself as possible, right? And, and again, I, I always go back to this because of how I grew up. You, you could do a 360 dunk, or you could do a nice, easy fadeaway or baby hook. It's two points. Now, the cost of that dunk is a lot to an older man or woman, right? And the fadeaway, no, that's, that, that's literally like I can do this in my sleep. So why is it that you may need to make those points so hard on yourself? Hmm. There's something else that, you, that, that that's that's work that you and I can't help people with. That's work that... We continue to do on ourselves and you gotta you gotta just uh you gotta have that perspective um you, i want to get into the we are press piece but any any final components just like overcoming injuries and, and really it's adaptation right that's the thing is if you don't evolve and adapt um that, that honestly is the truest indicator i think of someone who's just never gonna get it not like, yet it's not it's not like it doesn't make you like, I get it. I'm stubborn. I'm stubborn as a mule, but I'm also like, I'm not so dumb. Thank God. I'm not so dumb. Like I've evolved. And there's some things that, that child in me comes out every once in a while. And you know what? Still a big kid trying to figure things out. And that's okay too. But I, I can't, I can't be a kid all the time. Anymore. Dude. Well said. Um, and I, I think you said something that's really important. Your workouts should serve you. And their workouts should serve them. In the end, they've got their freedom of choice and their right to what they want to do with their life. That's that's their gift, and it's 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 that's their permission. Um, and they should serve you. And and by the way, if you're worried about someone else says or does, I know you. It's a little different because it's a business. And um, but for other individuals that this isn't their business, man, you do what works for you. And you know you, you follow follow fitness economics, right? Like it, it would be how do I spend less and get more? Like you do that with everything else in your life. 
you know like oh here here's this macbook pro it's four thousand dollars uh oh no here's this macbook pro i'll give it to you for 1500 and it's got like two you know two terabytes of mem oh shoot man how do i spend less get more I'll do the same thing with your fitness and when you when i think about that i also think about how fitness you know charles staley a classic you know legend in our our fitness world you know he he wrote this story one time about how trying to get more now because of whatever you think you need is really just being selfish because you're you're trying to take everything else and cause distress and and you know think of the rest of this as your team right these these are on my team these are on my team my hips are on my team my knees are on my team well i could give two craps about any of them because i want what i want so all of you are going to pay my price to get what i want for this one workout now you can calculate that and you can pay that price if you want but it's just selfishness in the end and it's like run through that like anytime where fitness starts to feel real heavy for a real long time it's probably headed in the wrong direction and so i think that that's something you know man what do we need most do i need a painful squat or a back-breaking burpee workout because i think i've got to burn calories there's seven thousand other ways a thousand of them you'd love if we had a chance to to talk through it with you is that what i really need or do i need this 10 minutes that i get in this really challenging life to get out of this freaking thing and to feel good and to, because when my brain doesn't feel good and when i'm navigating pain so i'm talking about brain from a mental health perspective and i'm navigating pain from a neurological perspective my brain's already trying to guard me my mental health is already fighting against me it's a big disaster anyway because i don't get anything from it it's just more drag more stress guys ladies that's out there for you it'll all be there when you get back there's plenty of it coming your way man i'm asking you just set it down man go have fun with your fitness allow that be a place where you can be childlike again where you just lose consciousness of time and space so dr stuart brown talks about and you come to not how many sets how many reps how many calories how many dude how i mean if you so you're motivated awesome but otherwise man just give yourself the freedom to get into what the gym now and movement really does for us shuts the world up for a second shuts this up for a second allows all of that to be freed up and to recover and to me you keep making those deposits consistently that's when you're going to really be able to start to uncover some really really good fitness before we go our last segment here i, I want to just i'm going to share the last workout i did i want you to share the last workout you did i just want to just just share it exactly what you did okay um so yesterday uh, always in my midday walk um and my girl molly the dog a boxer she wanted to she's got to get her pool play in so and i needed to get a good like cardiovascular upper body workout in because i did a little leg dominant one the day before so um i love anytime i can get outside i do it um i've got a heavy bag that stands out there and, and got my gloves on set the clock for 20 minutes and i hit the heavy bag when i get fatigued i do push-ups and i and i just repeat that for 20 straight minutes now someone will hear that and, and and maybe maybe you discount it or like by the way this is like legit like this is some of the this might be the best chest work i have ever done because i'm applying my knowledge also now you could do the same it could just be a one two and then regular push-ups you do that for 20 straight minutes and by the way great workout but you can also change the combination every time you get back on your feet and change the grip or variation of the push-up every time you get to the ground and I made it part of her workout because every time I uh, I would basically with my gloves on, I would grab her ball and I'd throw it in the pool. She jumps and she goes and gets it. She brings it back to me. And typically, by the time she'd bring it back, I was ready to transition to the ground or to a stand. So again, it's just like someone outside looking in like, what is going on here? But her and I are getting an incredible fitness and bonding experience. We're under the sun at the end of the day in the desert with the mountain view. Um, I'm using, yeah, I've got a heavy bag and we've got a pool. Okay. So a lot of people don't have access to that stuff. But um, this is this is this is where, where I am today at 41. And what I'm trying to say is this is what I hope everyone can get to at some point with their fitness that 
it's it, that that looks like I feel like when Alien came down and was like, sure, they might, they might be like they would definitely stop and notice. I, I, of all the neighborhood pe people in this neighborhood, first of all, the guy who's walking barefoot with a weight vest on cement, and um, but like they'd stop and watch, and I think they'd find beauty in, in watching that. And by the way, amazing full body workout. I got to unload stress on the heavy bag, and then I got to apply like everything I know about push ups. Mm -hmm. And push ups also mixed with cardiovascular conditioning, the competitive fatigue of punching and pushing up. And uh, it was just beautiful. And then she got an amazing workout. Um, there was just a lot of joy in that. I wanted to just share that that's a workout I did. Now, that it's probably not something I can program for you. Sure, I can. I'll make a version of that heavy bag push up workout I have in the past as well. But to me, that is like the perfect way to end my day. Mm -hmm. What'd you do? What's the last workout? First of all, I love that. That sounds like a 10 based on who you are. We've said good fitness should always make you feel better physically, mentally, relationally, and spiritually. That's just for us. That checks all four boxes. And it's always not perfect, but man. And here's the deal. You've built enough of a base where you might as well have fun with it. So yeah, there's a couple of days a week where you got to work on some stuff that's that's icky. You want to have an area that you got to bring up and you got to practice that. There's beauty in learning and, and in discipline and in the practice of, of physical culture and fitness, but that should be like a piece. You do all that so you can explore life and move and have fun. And so for me, it's interesting. I'll tell you what I did yesterday. I, you know, I'm the worst at consistency with fitness. And so I think I, I, I hiked up the mountain recently, which I love. It's, it's good. I can make it harder or easier or whatever. And I changed the walk a million different ways to just, um, Last night, all I got in yesterday, I did a little bit of movement on my grass in the sun in the morning barefoot. Just as I was led, I just listened to my body. It was like a lot of deflex. I mess messed with a couple of different coordinative patterns with just locomotion, uh, just opening up, letting things click and pop and move and probably like 10, 15 minutes. And then last night, I just rode on my bike, my cruiser bike with my mom around my neighborhood because she's out here for six weeks and she loves to do it. And I just love to be with her. And I was just riding a bike, man, without chasing anything, breathing fresh air, taking in the sights, the sun was setting, just looking at my mom and smiling because I'm just seeing her enjoy as she's riding this bike, which she doesn't get to do any other time of the year just because the way her house is set up. Um, but I'll share the last workout I did. It's interesting. I went into my lab out here in Phoenix and we have the heavy bag that actually Mike Tyson used to train on uh, in our my lab because he, he used to come out to Phoenix and train a lot. So it was left here at our resort. So it's legit, his heavy bag. And so I just, I, I stopped and I said, I'm not going to tell you what to do today. I'm going to let you talk to me. And I just listened to my body. Like I listened to some of the things and I started to look around the room and I'm like, oh, that would be. And then I started to connect the dots because I can, because I've got a base of fitness and I know my body a little bit. I know I felt that day. First thing I started out with was first I did a little movement, a little prep, whatever, took the heavy bag and I just swung it. And then I did like, just, just like pop, pop. And I stopped the bag, swung it, step, pop, stop the bag. Then I did like a little pop, swim, pop, swim. Then I swung it just to get my joints going and see how I felt progression, right? Slow to fast, simple to complex, unloaded to loaded. So I principles. So then I sent the bag, came in one step and did a little rat pop, stuck the bag, stuck the bag, stuck the bag. So I did this bag work. Then I went over and I did this, um, this movement work with like a ball off the wall, just reaction with balance and, and whatnot. And then I did this, uh, I'm trying to think what the, I did a couple different patterns. Um, another one in there, I think was just a really controlled, this, this interesting, like from the ground up split pattern that I did just to fire my lower body. But it was a lot of, a lot of play and a lot of movement and just kind of letting it lead me to where it was next. And when I was done, when I look back, I worked my total body. I had a couple areas of focus. I felt great. I had no pain the next couple days. You know, my wrists, my shoulders from the bag because I took it easy, like 70% of my power uh, and just easing in because I hadn't done it in a while. So, yeah, man, it was just it was just flowing and having fun, sweating and smiling. And um, that's that's kind of how I do it now. And there's part of me that wants to get a little more structured and just take a run at something. But for now, that's how it rolls. So talk to me what we are press. And uh, yeah, this is real a really quick. cool project. And 
uh, again, it, it's a fitness content that I have not seen mm. done before. I'm not saying it hasn't been done before, but I personally have not seen it. So it's a really unique, yeah. refreshing angle on, on, on fitness content. Yeah, so uh, was was introduced by a mutual friend to this incredible human being, former Army Ranger. His name is Steve Kukulin. A couple of years ago, and we talked about what he was led to do. He left Wall Street and was like, this isn't it. I know there's more for me. Wasn't a tech guy. Didn't know athletes. He tells me, yeah, we're building this thing with this app. It's in fitness. He's not a fit pro. Uh, and he's like, oh, we got this first athlete who's interested in getting involved. And, I, you know, I, I'm not into really sports a lot, so I don't know. His name's Christian McCaffrey. And I'm like, oh, okay. Um, so it's just so cool to see someone that gets called to something that isn't even like what they do, but he is an incredible leader, man, an incredible operator, uh, incredible teammate. And we, we had a lot of synergy on this phone call. I didn't know any of that. I, I had no idea where it would go. It was a raw startup and kind of prayed about it for a few days. And I heard this, the still small voice again, you know, just, I think if anything in my life, I've just tried to be obedient to that. Uh, and that's probably what's helped me most. Um, but it said, you help that man as long as I ask you to, and you do it on my account. And so I said, okay. So I did my best just to be available, to serve, have wound up getting more involved. In the end, what we do is this, it's based on a particular mission. And the mission is to help people access their potential and live a life of impact. That's it. That's it. And so what Steve was passionate about, what we've done is we focus three on three different avatars of highly competitive or pro level athletes that aren't chess beaters, that are still in the game, still in the fight, are really vulnerable about their stories, tell us about their past and allow us into their spaces. So we go to them where they're comfortable. So it's not like prepped and audited and set up and edited. We go to their spot, we go with their coach. And we're like this fly in the wall, like a barber shop. And it's just their real training, their real banter with their coaches, like real deal, bird's eye view. And then afterward we sit with them and we have conversations about these, these things that we build into our mental resiliency like pillars. So we follow pro level athletes, retired special operators, uh, public servants, police, fire, SWAT. And the reason we focus on that group for now is it's usually people that are part of something greater than themselves. They know that their contribution to the team matters and they know that what they do matters for either their team, their fans, their community, their country. Sometimes their lives are on the line. So they're these really cool people to lean into these stories of what it takes to press on toward the upward call in your life. We feel that we can help people by giving them access to like-minded people and stories and experiences from people like us, like them, that they might aspire to or look up to or be able to learn from. And then we also believe we can help them because we believe that their, their health and wellness will really contribute to that mission of accessing their potential and living a life of impact, whatever that means to them. And so that's we, we focus on physical fitness, mental resiliency, mental resilience, and relational health. And so what, we, what we've done now is we're working with researchers to create this, we call it the HQ, uh, but it's like a person's HQ, their health quotient, which helps them come in the top to really discover where they're at, what matters to them, how they're wired a bit, kind of clinically supported, which sends them to areas that might be of interest, but also might meet them where they're at to help them level up with these stories and, and hopefully this really good curated fitness and tools and resources to help them level up in those areas of their lives so that they can continue to unlock the potential inside of them and have impact on the world around them in the way that it matters. So it's been just a cool journey, man. And, you know, it's been ups and downs. We've taken our standing eight counts. We have some amazing people that have come around us in those three verticals and advisors uh, and, and our team. It's just incredible. Uh, but we have gone through a lot of crazy stuff and we're still in the fight. Uh, there's a ton of free stuff that's on YouTube. And, and I think it's hard because people are like, what is this? What are you doing with this? And we haven't been able to get them there yet. But for now, it's like, man, we're giving you access into this environment where if you just go in and listen to how the coach coaches this person or watch how they respond to what they're doing or the stresses or the way that they're dealing with it, it's just this really cool way to lean into something you don't get access to. And then to hear their stories I mean, we've, BJ, we've got people talking about being chained to radiators and foster care homes when they were, they like came up in a workout when they were in the deep, dark place 
they're like, man, this reminds me of we're talking we, people who talked about being the only one, a Navy SEAL, one of my favorite guys in our, our, our group, retired, just retired, 13 year Navy SEAL. He's like, I was the only one on my football. Imagine this. I was the only one on my football team in high school. I was a freshman coming in to be a freshman. We were all just hanging out, like practicing, having fun, getting ready for the upcoming summer. One of the captains was like, let's go in and maybe just, you know, just get some lifting in. And then it rolled into everybody just seeing how much they could bench 135. He's like, I was the only kid on the team that couldn't do it once in Texas playing football. And he's like, man, that moment. He's like, I went home. And he said, I had to go through that as, as a, a rising freshman. And he talked about what he had to go through and how that moment continues to come up for him when he was in really hard stuff uh, serving our country as a SEAL. We've got Megan Anderson, you know, UFC former um, uh, 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 championship contender, uh, talking about the moment that she tried to take her life when she was in the Australian Army. And reviewing the the things in her life, the wounds in her life that she didn't understand how to deal with and she didn't have tools to deal with them that led up to that moment. And then that day, the series of events that led her to a moment where she thought she that was her best option. And at the time, she thought that was her best option. And she takes us through that. So we've just got some really, really phenomenal people that are bearing real vulnerability in what it's taking them to continue to grow and press on with their lives. And all we want to do is connect like-minded people and serve them the best we can. You know, one of the, I guess, highlights of the two years I worked at Men's Health was I had the ability to go uh, in Milwaukee, where I'm originally from, and I spent like a half day watching J.J. Watts work out with his trainer. And, you know, it's – you. Uh, you see some of what you would expect and then you see like, oh wow, this is interesting. Like what really differentiated JJ was work ethic and his, his ability to move at that size. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people that didn't, uh, wouldn't really know how he trains today, right? Again, the way he trained at that moment is different than the way he trains now retired was different than the way he trained in high school. Likely. Right. Right? But, um, definitely strong and, and all that stuff and but the focus was much more on his movement his his, uh, his mobility and then also very uh position specific stuff and um watching the dynamic between him and his, his trainer like his trainer would, would knows him so well like i don't know if it, his trainer had a gym and he probably works with other people but like it's almost as if like it's like lebron's trainer like that's all lebron's lebron's trainer works with lebron and nobody else like he, he he travels with him he wakes up in the middle of the night on call if he, lebron wants to do a midnight workout like it's always it's always interesting it gives me that kind of like mickey rocky dynamic like you know the guy so well that the, the training can be adjusted on the fly or based on the way he's moving today you know that this is a five rep set instead of a 10 rep set like these are the intimate things that you you can't like you can't put pen to paper on this. This this is depending on everything that got him to this day. Not just what he did yesterday and the whole week, but like his entire lifting experience and journey. So it, 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 it's intimate. It, it's uh, it's always it's never the exact same session. And again, watching the We Are Press video with Christian McCaffrey, I bring him up because again, just the timely nature of just having been in the Super Bowl. He had an incredible season with the 49ers, but. The first part of the video is him playing pickleball with his coach. Now, and I, I'm sure the comments, uh, first of all, any all the laymen are like, this is stupid training. If only he trained this way, they would have won the Super Bowl, right? Like, there, there's all of that. But, like, it's like I don't think you understand. Like, there's a lot going on right now during the pickleball, right? There's so much. There's rhythm coordination. There is – it's a warm-up. There's multi-planar agility. There's camaraderie with the coach. And I'm sure the coach is studying the way he's moving to determine, like, okay, are we going hard today? Are we going, are we going easy? Are we focusing more, you know, more technique? Are we going more conditioning? Because um, you can tell a lot about someone's physical readiness during a game of pickleball, right? Yes. Um, if, if someone is mentally, physically taxed, they're coming short on some of the hits, or they're missing, or they're 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 slow to the spot, right? But anyway, it was just that's before they begin into the actual workout itself, and again. 
a lot of the stuff they're doing is so specific to what he needs, not only with his physical abilities today, his strengths, his weaknesses, but his position. Um, it's not at all in some ways what you'd expect. And I think that's why, again, like keep going. Don't worry about like, we can't really define it yet. It's a newer, it's a newer thing and it's good content. Yeah, man. Th th thank you. I, I, you know, we are learning, we're evolving. What we realize with everyone we've gone to see and all the really cool coaches that we, we, we believe that the coaches we get, get to connect to through them is probably one of the hearts of our brands because we're ac we're accessing people that have this incredible passion and experience and wisdom. Our job is to really curate. There's so much information out there. We're trying to curate the best of to serve people with. Hey, you may not like it, take what you like, leave the rest, but we're really having an opportunity to curate some really cool stuff. What we realize across the board is that every human being is a human being. They've all got bad days, they've got good days, they've got gaps in coping mechanisms, they've got coping mechanisms. They've got foundational skills, practices that underpin everything they do, but they do them uniquely based on who they are, how they're wired, their fit ID, their HQ, like, so you see all of that, you know, this person has a gold medal and this person has a gold medal. And I guarantee you, they didn't train the same period across the history of the Olympics. So we see a lot of that. You know, the other thing we just see is what they, what they, what they personally connect to and what they personally get attracted to. Like I'm on Ross St. Brown, you know, John Brown, their father trained the boys growing up. They speak three languages, uh, uh, BJ. They don't speak English to their mom, only German ever since they were born. They took the SATs in all three languages, French, German, and English, and got 1,400 or higher on all three of them. Dad was a two-time Mr. Universe, three-time Mr. World. Like they trained a certain way with a certain type of pressure and a certain type of expectation. So people watch them train and be like, oh, the form is terrible. No, no, context. When, when Christian was doing that video with the pickleball, he never plays never plays that dude invests at least and people be like well he makes this okay you spend a million dollars a year on your own improvement it's not fitness this dude searches the world to fly people in 50 grand a week i'm flying you into my house and i want to know i want to learn can i just spend a week with you and learn and ask you about and ask you about and do this. He does the work. He invest and he's got a phenomenal staff at his feet. He uses them too with the 49ers. But he invests every single year in every single thing he can do to eke out every bit of God-given potential he's been given to do the thing he's doing now. That's it. That's his driving force. This dude has a second guy watching the workouts with his phone videoing everything. So if it doesn't feel right for Christian. He immediately asks him to come over and he looks at the video, slows it down, brings his coach over. And he goes, you see this right here? I have to drive my knee farther forward because if I don't do that, this whole exercise is a waste. This dude, the effort, no one, you have no clue that the effort that this dude puts in behind the scenes. It is unbelievable. And that day when he was like a little bit curt, but not even. He was doing he's so focused, man. He was doing his work. Everything has a purpose. Everything has a function. Everything has to have a payoff. Um, and he had to run right after. And he couldn't do like interviews with you, man. I got to go. And he just splits. And we're like, oh, we'll, we'll get him later. And, you know, it is what it is. He didn't tell us. The whole workout, bro, he had gotten a text message to honor us to still actually shoot all the footage. He honored us by doing the whole thing when before the workout started, he got a text message from a courier saying, I'm waiting at your house. I have your engagement ring for your for his wife. It's, he's engaged now for Olivia Copo. He didn't want to tell anyone because it was a surprise. He's the only one that could sign for it. The dude's waiting at his house. He's like, man, I've got a commitment. Can you wait, please? I'll pay you for your time. Never told us. This dude in the back of his mind has got his engagement ring waiting for his future wife and a dude waiting at his house and he goes through all the work and puts in all the effort and treats us with kindness and respect while he's got that going on underneath his mind, bro, high level. And so the stories we get to see, but in the end, we as press are trying to get people involved in meeting you where you're at and it's process, process, something I've never done well in my life, outcome, outcome. If you're interested in this, here's a, pro here's a pattern, a principle, here's patterns and here's things you can practice. 
level up, level up. You start where you want, we're with you because we're all trying to press on toward the upper call in our lives. So that's it, man. That's It's been really interesting, super challenging, really humbling, and we'll see where it goes. But I thank you for asking. And you know, if anybody checks it out, if, if there's things we can do to serve you, things that don't make sense, if you have questions, just be kind to us because we're trying our best. But any any questions, any insight, any encouragement or suggestions would be would be so appreciated as we're trying to serve you. Where, where can they learn more? Uh, to direct them to the YouTube channel. Again, I'll drop that in the notes as well. Yeah, you almost everything, for, I think, for us on a social, which we, we're just still new in it, uh, in the platforms, uh, Instagram for sure, YouTube, is We Are Press. And we named it because it's a movement. We, not us, we, all of our people, We Are Press. Uh, and then our website, which you can find some information out, is wearepress.io. So that's us, man. Guys, you want to check this stuff out. Um, if you ever just want to really see what, again, like, because, again, I, I worked at Men's Health, and I know the most popular stuff was always about abs and chest, and then what celebrities or athletes' workouts were. The reality is what typically is shown is not their actual workout. It's something that's put together that makes sense for uh, the reader, who's just a normal person out there in life. Um, but you get to actually see the way they're training on a given day, the interaction between them and their coach. And uh, like you said, they got to put away all of the dynamics that happen outside. I remember um, you sent me a photo with uh, Drew Holiday working with the band man in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, when he was with the Bucks. And like a week later, he got traded to the Celtics. And they were rooted. They were rooted in Milwaukee. It was like, the, 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 from what I gathered in the articles I read, it was like, it was of all the places they had been prior, like the place they really felt at home. Their kids felt this was the place they wanted to, you know, grow up at. And then just like that, shipped off to, to Boston. Um, and that team, by the way, is not the same without that point of attack defender. Yeah, he well, I'll tell you what, that's probably one of my other favorite human beings, Drew Holiday, him and his wife. And th I, there's so many cool stories. And, and I think also what's available for people is you can take what you like and leave the rest. So you might see really cool warm-ups. You know, just follow along with them. You might see really cool cool-downs. You might like this little uh, drill that they build in and the way they coach it. And so you're getting, like, free access to the athlete and the coach that they pay for for free. And so you get to pick and pluck and try things and follow things and maybe get inspired. And just, again, that that's all free. And uh, even a lot of them, when we have – we call them train with me's. So that's the – that's the actual like workout that you can follow along with. We just give free links to the actual workout layout, sets and rep schemes, and that's that's just ours to, to give away and just get feedback and hopefully serve people. Thanks for your time, man. We'll get you back on again very soon. It was awesome seeing you last week. Um, I wish it could be every Thursday that get together, maybe one day. But uh, thank you guys for listening. We gave you two hours of your time, of our time, a second just to like, the video, subscribe for more great content, whether it be podcasts, how-to videos, follow along workouts. It's all here for you. And again, check out We Are Press. I, I'll drop the links in the video description on iTunes and Spotify. Check the show notes. Uh, Dave Jack, sign us off, my friend. I just want to say something about you, and and I'm not paid to say it, but I want it. I just want everybody who follows you to know, um, man, you are a special human being, brother. You're personality your creativity how i've watched you for over two decades be on the cutting edge of things the amount of work the amount of effort behind the scenes that you put into delivering the best possible work that you can serve people with you are an absolute gift to our profession i respect you so much and just from another voice because they may not see what you do and how much you do I can from a different friendship and a different relationship in your life. They just need to know that you are you are one of a very rare few. And I, I so appreciate you, man, and, and everything that you do and your friendship. Likewise, man. Look, I, I think uh, if you're not blown away by um, your communication ability on, on this podcast, it's, it's every, every podcast with you, man, it's just you have, you have a true gift of communication and you have a true gift in love for people and I, I whenever I get the way I get sometimes with people I just try to just try to remember there's a different way to be and uh, so again what you hope in life is to be surrounded by people that can fill the gaps 
reminds you that you can always get better in certain ways. And uh, and again, like I wouldn't be here today without you. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And I appreciate that. And uh, look forward to, to the continued fellowship. See you soon, brother. <laughs> See you soon. Thank you for everybody for for showing up and sticking around. All right, guys. We'll, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be back. Bye, bye. Flowers. Uncle Baby Biscuits needs his midday shake and walk. Okay. Love you guys. Peace. Get out there, baby.